and uh, working with founders and family businesses is a real passion of mine and I probably when I'm not teaching uh, through coaching constellations I'm um, working with my own portfolio of clients and probably most of them I would say if not all of them are either founders or they're members of a family they're members of a family which is in business or occasionally um, members of a company that's run by a family and there's a issue about finding their place within that family business system it's uh, it's always complicated and I think it's the this area is perhaps if uh, I, it, it's hard to think of a better fit of a methodology the applied philosophy of family constellations and organizational constellations than with founders and family businesses because you're working inevitably and explicitly with family dynamics so some uh, understanding of family dynamics and how they can get entangled and confused in organizational systems is really really useful one of the uh, joys of uh, working remotely is that um, to some extent it makes um, some of the teaching uh, a little bit easier because uh, I can also get through more material quickly by using some visual uh, support so you don't often hear um, the word PowerPoint and constellation in the same sentence but I'm going to share some PowerPoint slides just to set us off into a, a hopefully a useful direction uh, so that we can uh, reflect together on some of the key themes and um, hopefully you can all see that if you're not familiar with shared screen there's a vertical line between the PowerPoint that I'm sharing and the Zoom group and if you just grab that with your mouse and slide it to the right the Zoom group gets smaller and the PowerPoint slides get bigger. Just shout um, out loud, as it were, if you have any problem with that. So, uh, yeah, coaching. I'm really talking here about coaching founders and family businesses as a, as a coach or organizational consultant. But of course, for many of us, we are founders as well. So this... Uh, this uh, way of exploring these issues I think will perhaps resonate for some of you as well as founders or as members of a family system or a family business system so um, broadly speaking we're going to be exploring uh, and I'm going to go quite quickly through these three broad kind of areas of systems that come under this this heading First of all is a founder-led business where it's just the founder or founders plus employees. There's no other family members in the system. The second type is when the founder has family members in their business or organizational system as well as themselves. And the third type is a family where it's very explicit that it's a family business and they have employees. Now there are all sorts of other combinations of those but there's sort of broadly laying the ground for the field we're exploring this morning. And I just want to share some key thoughts with you about business in general and family businesses uh, or organizational life in fact. I would say that every business and every organization is really a family business because everybody comes from family whoever started the business was embedded in a family <clears throat> in a uh, good and peaceful and generative way or a difficult way and so everybody also who works in a business whether there's any explicit family in it or not, comes from a family and brings their unmet needs for belonging in particular into a business. So <clears throat> I'm always saying that uh, organizational constellations and business constellations is a far more complex uh, field to work in 
than family systems. Now, I know that's a bit uh, contentious, perhaps, but I would say family systems are, of course, very complex. And there's a lot of emotion in a family constellation. But in a business constellation, you've got both the family and the business and the whole organizational dynamics as well. So you've got multiple overlapping competing systems. So I would just sum that up by saying every business really is a family business. And every founder-led business has several founders. Now often you meet uh, founders who say, I'm the single founder, it's my business, and everybody else is our employees. But in fact, when you work with the origin story of any founder-led business, there's always other people involved. It could be the partner of the founder, as simple as that, that allowed the founder to set up the business and resource them. Very often, <clears throat> I was working with a, a woman recently who was a founder of a large international business and she, there were some problems in her marriage and it turned out and I'd worked with her for 18 months before I found this out that the business the idea for the business was actually her husband's and she had um, facilitated and made and made it manifest in the world and because he hadn't been acknowledged their marriage was in trouble once that was included and resolved their marriage got much much better and she was much uh, more effective as a leader. So when you're working with founders, it's always important to start with the origin story, and I'm going to come back to that in the summary at the other end of this session. And the third very general point, really, um, just to set, the, set us off in this interesting direction, is that conflict in a family business has far more impact in a system, in the business system, than in a corporate or other kind of uh, organization and that's because um, for, for sort of obvious reasons is that the family is at war if a family is at war in a business it's extremely difficult for them because it's very public but it's also difficult for everybody uh, who works with them and the stories and the chat and the gossip gets bigger and bigger and more complicated but it's also complicated and painful and has far-reaching consequences because businesses like that attract people to work for them who have conflict unresolved in their family. So for them, it's like being in their family and being re-traumatized all over again. There's some very famous examples of conflict in a family business having an impact, and I think it's something to really be aware of when you're working with family businesses. So, um, when you're working in these kinds of businesses, it's really, or organizational systems, they're not always a business, it could be a social system, it's really important to have an awareness of our deepest human needs. And the first, and perhaps arguably the deepest human need, is to belong. And uh, I like to think support people to understand the importance of belonging by imagining behind you and you can do this right now all of the systems in which you've belonged rather like a peacock's tail where each of the eye spots of the tail represents a system that you have belonged in organizational systems professional systems social cultural systems and of course, going all the way back to your family system. And belonging, when you're working with founders and family businesses, is really important to include explicitly in your work as a coach or consultant. Without understanding belonging and how you've belonged and how embedded we are as human beings, it will be difficult to have any make any lasting impact with these um, finely balanced systems. The second need is for safety. There's a lot of talk uh, about psychological safety. It's a popular subject. And of course, uh, safety, your first experience of feeling safe or unsafe, belong, uh, begins in the family. 
And the third is recognition. These are, are my sense of the three deepest human needs, belonging, safety, and recognition. And by recognition, I mean being seen as uniquely you, not just as part of a larger system, but as you, and with all of your special uh, skills and talents and uh, energies. And uh, many founders, uh, in particular, I would say, have a some kind of lacking or trauma in one or all of these areas, belonging, safety, and recognition. And I'm just going to share with you uh, two more slides. Um, one about some of the deep patterns that you can see in founders and you may recognize in yourself or your clients, and then in family businesses. And then we'll come back and do some experiential work. So what I notice is that the deep patterns that founders who are founders and family businesses that come into coaching or ask for some help usually have these things going on. That there's an explicit intention they tell you about, the story of what they're doing and why and where their energy comes from. And then there's a hidden, unconscious something going on beneath and under that explicit, so there's something more implicit. And there's very often a deep loyalty at play that is the difficulty has its, the, uh, the difficulty they're facing is connected to these three things, particularly the second and third. I'll give you some examples. So when working um, with founders, there are, I would say there are many, probably a dozen deep patterns, but for the sake of today, let's look at what I would call the top three. The first is that a founder, um, and you can certainly get this in a family business as well, the explicit story and the invitation, the seduction, in fact, is we're family here. It's like a family. You'll love it. It's like a family. And those generally are the sort of businesses you want to be very careful about joining. Because underneath that uh, explicit seduction, if you like, and the need for the founder to say that, is an unspoken sentence that's something like this. This family is better than mine. And by the way, it's therefore it must be better than yours. So you must never leave me. Uh, you must never leave this family. I've noticed in both working for founders and uh, coaching founders for 20 years that they almost that those that are, need some support through coaching or uh, counseling or consulting of some kind usually are very often uh, are deeply offended when somebody leaves their organization. They can't believe it and see it as an act of deep disloyalty. And in many cases will refuse to speak with them again. So this is coming from an unmet need to belong safely in a family. And it's very potent in founders. The second pattern that I've noticed is that the explicit is everything goes well here. It's all perfect, wonderful. And this is of often disguising a deeper truth, which is a, um, a sentence a bit like that. I'll get it right this time for you. So with a founder who has a parent, or more often actually a grandparent, who somehow has failed in business, uh, or the story about them is they failed, they went bankrupt, or something awful happened, they lost their wealth, or their family, or their land of origin. And then the deeper unconscious loyalty is, but I will stay loyal and always struggle too. So with founders that are really going round and round a kind of washing machine of problems, and the explicit looks and sounds great, but the inner truth for them is that they're exhausted, burning out, or really struggling to create or enjoy success, it's very often connected to a deep and unconscious loyalty to somebody who couldn't. And the third one is, uh, I'll show you. And this again is connected to family of origin. 
And the I'll show you could be, I'll show you how to make money, like you should have done. I'll show you how to control everything, so that we don't lose control again, and everything stays safe. Or, I'll show you how to look after people, which really means I'll show you how to look after children. Or, explicitly, I'll show you how you should have looked after me. And this is um, very common in founders and usually uh, less, sometimes less unconscious. Founders are more willing to understand and get to this quicker. And it's usually a relief and it helps them separate their own personal difficulties of finding their place and their voice and their authority being recognized in their family from their business. One more slide. Family businesses. Now, of course, family businesses are often also founder-led businesses, but these are the things that I notice in family businesses. Everyone in the family belongs, in brackets, but only if you work in the business. Now, um, I've written a substantial article about uh, the impact of Donald Trump's family on him in uh, this context, which um, I can share with you if that's of interest. But you'll know from um, his, uh, uh, both his uh, public, what's shared publicly about him and what he said, um, that his older brother was the favoured one of the, by the father. But when the older brother said he didn't want to work in the family business anymore, um, the Trump father, um, Donald Trump's father and his older brother's father, uh, really excommunicated him, belittled him, um, cut him out of the will, never spoke to him again, told awful uh, tr uh, untruths about him. So Donald Trump was left with uh, a very difficult choice, either work in the family with my uh, bullying and punitive and dangerous father, and I'll belong safely, in the Trump sense of safety, or I'll be excommunicated from the family, excluded from the family, and I'll lose my belonging, safety, and recognition. And this is very common in business as well. Uh, I mean, that was a property business, but it's sort of you can see how it's carried on in the next generation in politics. So it's a very toxic combination that everyone belongs, but really, you only belong if you work for me. It's usually the father and or mother saying that. Touched on this already a little bit. So everything in the family is good. There's no conflict here. And what happens when that story is told, because it usually is a story, and it's usually a cover-up for the exact opposite, everything that can't be expressed in the family is then expressed in the business. So families that don't know how to deal with conflict inside the family system will sometimes set up a business in order to have the conflict. And they create extremely uh, painful business systems. But it allows them to uh, be in this kind of trance of belief that the family, everything in the family is okay. And then lastly, um, if you have contact with a family business, you'll often hear that they say the future of the business is the priority, not the family. But when it comes to the all-important succession and inheritance questions with a family business, the future of the family is, of course, actually the priority. 99% of the time, not always, sometimes it can be the other way around, and the family, um, as it were, comes to an end, and the business carries on. But very often, um, it's this way around. People talk about the future of the business, but actually the children have already been promised inheritance and succession. So, um, I'm going to invite uh, you, Bianca, please, to put everybody into uh, breakouts in, in pairs, or triads if there are too many to um, put into pairs. And just spend five minutes together just talking about what resonates for you. 
and also how some of these uh, knowledge of these patterns and insights might be useful for you in your business or what's sparking your interest here what's making sense what would you challenge and change and what would you love to say if we were in a workshop of eight people and not 73 so for how many minutes do you want them to be in the room um, yeah about five or six minutes i think so five or six yeah let's go let's go eight minutes four minutes each way in pairs <laughs> yes okay I will open the rooms. Have fun. So, yeah, what resonates and how might this be useful for you? So, having uh, said that uh, I didn't want to use the chat, um, I'm going to um, change my own rule. Typical of founders, I find. Um, if you want to share something in the chat that you've taken away from that discussion, please feel free to drop it in there, just something that was that was useful for you or an insight you had from the introduction or other things that you feel are want to come out of you into the field. Ah, some more familiar faces. It's such a <clears throat> lively field, founders and family businesses. It's alive with so many systemic patterns, hidden loyalties, hidden dynamics. And I think there's a significant lack in standard executive and leadership coaching which tends to exclude family dynamics as if there's something to do with therapy uh, that leaves founders and family businesses without the resources and insights that are available from this uh, rich field of work that Bert Hellinger left with us. Charities, yes, goodness. <clears throat> Penny, I see you mentioned charities. I, I always, whenever I hear the word charity, or I, I often think a charity, or uh, well, yeah, there are a few other similar, but a charity is one of the hardest systems to find your place in, and. Uh, for several systemic reasons. There's all, always, I think, a family trauma sitting at the heart of uh, a charity, usually in the founders. And there's usually an imbalance of exchange, of giving and receiving, but uh, you get an awful lot of burnout in charities because people are trying to give in order to receive what was not available from their family of origin. They give and give in the hope of receiving what isn't available from an organization and uh, yeah these kinds of things are really important to include and um, yeah patterns attracting patterns as you say Darko I think um, founders with an unconscious pattern attract employees with the same pattern and attract coaches and facilitators with the same pattern. So you've got these three sets of peacock's tail feathers all flapping about trying to get uh, their uh, get attention as it were and if ever there's a need to work on yourself as a coach or facilitator it's if you're working with a founder or uh, family business because you will find yourself as you do in general working with clients, um, if you want to know what's unresolved in your own shadow, look at your portfolio of clients and you'll find in their patterns which are also in you and the stronger the pattern and the more uh, 
difficult you find it to work with or wondering why it keeps coming up, the more likely it is to be in your unconscious too. So it's really important and this work is again so generous in giving us the tools to support ourselves and work on our own stuff whilst also working with our clients. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mariana. That's very touching. Yeah. So, okay, so I, I thank you. Please feel free to keep, keep commenting. Um, I want to move now into doing some work. It's, it's called the Constellation. You may be familiar with it. Um, uh, some visual mapping and some facilitation of that map um, for somebody in the group and um, first of all I'm going to just share with you uh, the technology that we developed about a year ago to do this um, which uh, I know that many of you will be familiar with this or something very similar but this is kind of the, the coaching constellations version so back in the real um, world uh, work, which uh, uh, perhaps we will be returning to one day um, this year or next uh, when working one-to-one -one with, with this methodology uh, we use these wooden representatives where each one has a face on um, so you can see the direction of their attention but also an arrow on their head and so when we moved a year ago into into lockdown in this social system trauma that we're all caught up in we developed a version of this that would work in the digital space. So that's just a photograph of the physical objects that we used to use. And now uh, we're using a top-down view of the same objects so that we can uh, create, this is both in trainings, but also I use this with my clients all the time, um, create constellations and maps of what is. Um, as though we're stuck to the ceiling, or in a helicopter perhaps would be more elegant, looking down on the constellation where the, the green circle is the boundary of the system and we can that can mean different things of course and then just like in a constellation in the room or on the tabletop you can find your relative place in relationship to different representatives um, and you can find your relative direction as well so by using the directional uh, arrow here. So any time you click on a representative you get this blue box around and you can rotate the angle and you can change the size. Now this relative size turns out to be actually an incredibly useful additional aspect of this work which has only become possible because of working in this digital space. And so <clears throat> very often if you're asking a client to find their place in relationship, let's say you're working with somebody who works for a founder, um, you might find the relative size is actually a very important part of the part of the work. So um, I'm, what I've really enjoyed uh, working with um, in the last year is combining this uh, way of mapping and this is just a, on a it's called a, a Google Jamboard. It's just a Google product, a free Google product, the whiteboard. And then we've added these images on onto it, and they're very, very straightforward to load. And what is really uh, useful is to combine this way of working with a group on Zoom where you, you ask representatives in the group to come onto this board, and I'll share the link um, with you in a moment and um, actually pick a representative for themselves and move in the space in relationship to the client in a way that feels true for them in their body. And so this combination of Jamboard and um, resonance through the field in the Zoom group is um, something I also wanted to share with you today so that um, uh, you get an opportunity to experience that and I'm no doubt you've all done that with others already but um, so hopefully it'll be familiar. So <clears throat> all the technology and um, bells and whistles aside 
I now invite you just to tune into your sense of where you are right now in this moment with your feet on the floor and just see if uh, there's an issue that you would like to explore and I'll choose somebody from the group um, and we'll do perhaps we'll get an opportunity to do one perhaps we'll get an opportunity to do two um, constellations where we use the Jamboard and the group simultaneously and have a look at an issue that's to do with founders or a family business and then I'll do some teaching off the back of that constellation it'll probably teach itself and then um, offer you some uh, another few summary slides before we finish so um, Bianca I, I remember you said there's some clever way of um, inviting people to step forward if they want to be a client Please raise your digital hand if you want to. Three very quick ones. That's interesting because I can't see any. Oh, okay, yes. Duke yes, is yes. the first one, and then Adina, and then Darko. Okay, okay. So, thank you. So, um, I'd like to just hear from each of you just a little uh, sentence or two about what the uh, what the issue is you'd like to explore. So is it Dika first? Yeah, please turn your microphone on. Thank you. Dika. Dika. Yes. Okay. My Dutch is really terrible. <laughs> also my English. <laughs> You're doing well so far. So what's the issue that um, you'd like to explore, just very briefly? Um, I'm a farmer. Mm -hmm. And last year, uh, we uh, combined uh, two family farms from my husband and from our family together, trying to be oneness. <laughs> and um, my father-in-law, he has we are we are a dairy farm with cows, and my father-in-law he had horses for hobbies. Okay. Horses are a very important uh, part of the family. Okay, so just can I just stop you there? Yeah. Thank you. And um, what's the difficulty that you you're want to explore? Just in five or six words. What is my role? Right. Where's my place in all of this? Where's my place? in relationship with a horse's part. Okay. Yeah. Do you love horses? <laughs> uh, as an animal, yes. What's the other part of the sentence? Deeply connected with my family in law. Yes. I wanted to ask you, do you love horses more than you love your family of origin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but don't answer that question. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to get a little sense from each of the three of you. So, Adina in Romania. Yes, uh, me and my husband, we run this educational center. Uh, we're developing educational programs and therapeutic for kids, parents, and teachers. Uh -huh. And uh, my issue now is that um, I realize that we are living our family life in the business. Mm. <laughs> and I need to live my family life outside the business. Yes, yes. It's kind of, it's stuck in yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like a... The the business has become the family. Is that what you mean? The the two the identity. No, no. no I don't feel that the business uh, has become my family. But we spend all of, mo, a lot of our family time inside the business, yes. developing, creating, working for the business, working yes. for the house, the building, and everything. And uh, it remains um, less energy for ourselves. So there's no time for your own relationship. 
your own family. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Mm. No. no energy, not only no, time. Energy. Okay. Different. Yeah. And whose constellation is that on the wall behind you? All flying towards a mirror. Mine. Yeah. Is that your family of origin? Or your current family or your business? First one, family of origin. Mm. Mm. It's like I'm keeping the mirror for them to see and to return. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Touching. Thank you very much, Adina. Come back to you, Darko. Yeah, maybe I'm off topic and maybe we have already the candidate, it feels like. But I'll just share quickly. Uh, so it's more maybe me working with a family business I shared a bit already. So I don't know if that's a topic at all. Sure, uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because I was invited and I'm really seductive, <laughs> really invited in, uh, to, to, to help them. Um, deal with a succession uh, and in a way they, 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 they say they can they, 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 they want to have a, a, a external management not from the family but really from kind of professional CEOs and they recruit people and they're always weak in their position and, and the founder is always uh, stepping in and not letting them uh, not letting them lead uh, so why, I recognize why, a lot of things that you mentioned there. Yeah, why would they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I'm trying to find my way, you know, what, what's my position in there to, mm -hmm. from, from what would be useful uh, mm -hmm. and not to belong too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, and to think about what you represent for the founder. Yeah. Is the yeah. founder a man or a woman? A man. Yeah. And how's his relationship with his father? With his father. Mm. That I don't know. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the CEOs that he gets in then then fires, are they men or women? Uh, currently women. Mm. Yeah. What's his relationship with his mother? <laughs> I don't know either. Okay. I don't know. That part I don't know. You won't be able to make any difference there unless you can respectfully find out what's going on in the unconscious. But... Mm. If he keeps recruiting women um, mm. and then getting rid of them, mm. maybe it's some very deep entanglement with his mother and father. I don't know. I mean, I'm That's just, it. you know, because we're in a learning environment, I'm sharing yeah. my thinking out loud. I wouldn't normally do this with yeah. a client. Of yeah. He's not yeah. getting rid of them. That's the thing. Okay. They yeah. can't find their place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's, get, he's getting, getting rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> He makes yes. it Im impossible yes. for them to yes. find their place. Work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. You'll never take over from me. I'm the founder. Yes. Even though I tell you that I, I, I worked with a founder last year. They spent, oh, I think it was about £150,000 on headhunters and recruitment <laughs> processes. Yes. And there was never really any intention of the guy letting go at all. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. he had to spend that money to show the outer world and me and other consultants what he was pretending to do. Well, mm. he was consciously there was a desire to do it, but actually unconsciously the same here. Yeah, exactly. very very hard to leave something oh. you've oh. set up because you're asking. So that tells you several things. One of which is the founder's got his identity and his business mixed up. Yes. And I, I think this is one of the things that we can do with founders is help them. And you have to do this very gently and respectfully and over a long period of time, separate yeah. themselves from their business. Yeah. Okay, Darko. Thank I'll you. Come back to you. And Thanks. I'm going to see if we can do something with all three. Um, so I come back to um, Duca, horses. Cows. Um, Darko, can I just ask you to mute yourself again, so just so that I get um, Duca? Could you unmute yourself, and then then you'll come up because I'm in speak of you. 
Um, are you still there? Uh, I mute myself, you mean. Could you mute yourself, Darko? Yes, I did. Thanks. Thank you. Are you there, Duca? Yes. Marvellous. There you are. Thank you. Now you pop up when you speak. So how are you, how are you doing since um, five minutes ago when we were <laughs> chatting? A little bit afraid and a little bit shaking. Okay. Do you know what that's connected to? I can't go there. I'm too afraid. Okay. Because the cost might be too great. Is I that right? Yeah. 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 So, do you need anything else today? Do you want to look at something, or would you rather just? Stay with that. Oh, here come your children to tell you to stop. <laughs> I mean, um, she won't be long, don't worry. We're just talking about cows and horses. <laughs> Bless. How many children do you have? Sir? How many children do you have? We have three children. Okay. 11, 9, and 7 years old. Okay. Was she the youngest? She was the middle. Middle one, okay. And she's reflecting me all the time. <laughs> Does she prefer cows or horses? Just the whole. The, all of it. The, she yeah. holds the whole, yeah. Okay. That was your constellation then, wasn't it? I think so. <laughs> yes. I'm going to leave you with that and wish you well because you're this is a very delicately balanced situation and and I want to honor your wish not to disturb that. Is that okay? It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Adina, how are you doing? I'm fine now, thank you. Good. Oh, yeah, you look very different. <laughs> what have you got so far that's useful? The fact that um, I just uh, said, said out loud what my problem is, <laughs> what my need is. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's clear to me now. Hmm. Well, sometimes just being witnessed in a group is an intervention in itself, isn't it? If you're safely held mm -hmm. and being seen, then, yeah. So do you need anything in connection to your question about having no energy for your family because you're so busy helping other families? How do I start? How do you start? This is, hmm. this is my question now. Hmm. How do you start what? Oh, living my family life separately from the business. Hmm. Hmm. Or how do I stop? <laughs> how do you stop? How do you stop? Yes. How do I stop from work and go home? Mm, mm. Well, I don't want to trivialize such an important question, but this is where visual, a visual map can be useful. I've just put a, a link to the Jamboard in the chat. Can you see that? Yes. If you click on that, you'll come onto this, um, onto this Jamboard. <clears throat> and... Um, I would, this is another reason I, I love working in this way, um, 
you can do things that are much harder to do in the physical world. And that is to, can you see it okay? Yes, yes. Great. Is I'm just going to duplicate these two system boundaries. So one is the family, your, you and your family, and one is you and your business that you operate with your husband. And I'm also going to duplicate you, so there's two of you. Okay, now I'll leave the rest to you. So you can change the size of those two circles, you can change your relative place, and you can put different people and things in each so that you start to see and feel the separateness. <clears throat> so the left one is uh, for the family, for my family. Okay, yeah. That's, yeah. that's up John, to you. sorry to come in like this. Would you be willing to share your screen so we can follow? Sure, sure. I will. And I can see some people have jumped on um, the Jamboard, but please don't touch any of the representatives um, whilst Adina's working. You're welcome to come in and have a look, or you can watch on my shared screen. So every constellation, um, as you all know, starts with an expression of what is, and that's a, a great gift, is just setting up a map of what is. A constellation is simply the external map of the client's inner unconscious image. So even without being asked or given much direction, you can see that Adina is setting up her family system on the left and the organizational system which she operates with her husband on the right. And the relative size is already a piece of information. And now we see relative numbers as well of people. And, um, yes. Uh, what would you it, like? It's hard for me to, to change the size of the circles. I don't know. Okay, so if you just if you click on it you'll see there's a blue box appears around it. And then grab the bottom right hand corner, the little dot at the bottom. Yeah, it's not too uh, and you can make make it bigger or smaller. Would you like me to change the size for you? Yes, please. Can you see my shared screen? No. Would you, okay, not to worry. I can, would you like it smaller or bigger? Smaller. Smaller. How's that? Oh, no, no, not this one. Okay. Ah, the other one. Sorry. No, the, the little circles, the people around. Okay. Do you mean the other green circle, or do you mean the do you mean the representatives? The representatives. Oh, okay. So it's the same for the representatives. Just click on them, and you get a blue square around them. And uh, yeah, I can see what the problem is. It's because this is. Um, I need to just send this to the back. Okay. Now, now try, and you should be able to reach them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's working now. So the, these are just layered images with transparent backgrounds, so we just need to make sure that they're um, in the right order. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So just tell me a little bit about what what we're looking at here, Adina. So. On the in the left circle is my family is uh, me my husband and my daughter, and the right circle is the business that I try. I see this here. Mm -hmm. um, me my husband the co-founders uh, the colleagues the clients and mm. uh, all the stuff we are working with. Mm -hmm. How old is your daughter? Four. Okay. How was life for you when you were four? Yeah, okay. So this is why it's, yeah, why it's com coming up now. It, it almost, 
there's something about the way you describe it and the intensity of the pain that it feels like a, a mirror of something that happened in your family. And so it's not just about the time you're spending there, but it's also about the, the pain of what happened. Yeah. So that was then, and this is now. So maybe just um, include that in your heart and allow it to be there. And that will, strangely enough, allow you to separate it out from the current reality. I guess, would it be true to say that you're on a mission to make families, systems more healthy and safer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that's exhausting. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So, um, who or what uh, resources you? What, where do you get strength from when you feel unsettled and confused like this? From my husband. Your husband, yeah. So choose somebody in the group to represent your husband, please. <clears throat> um, Andrew, would you like to represent my husband, please? So Bianco, could I ask you to just to pin um, Adina and the husband representative who I can't see at the moment? I'm just going to go back into gallery view, maybe. Yeah, that's me. Oh, that's you, Andrew. Hi. Hi, Joe. Um, I'm going to pin you, and I'm going to pin. I already did. Oh, okay. They both they both have a pin. That's strange because nothing happened on my screen. So sorry, I've I, I've. Yeah, perhaps you have to do it yourself. Then it's only on each computer. I don't know. Yeah, that's strange. Anyway, so uh, what's been going on for you, Andrew, while you've been listening and witnessing this? Uh, um, I don't know what happened all those years ago. That, that's kind of a. I'm not asking you about that. Uh, so, so my cute. Okay, I just noticed the the blues, um, but but I'm uh, be, between uh, Adina's uh, jacket and the wall. Mm. Um, I'm a little bit hot. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel when you look at Adina? Are you there for her? I feel a, a risk, so a need to, to rescue. Mm -hmm. Would it be true to say, I'm here for you? I'm here for you. Adina, did you you set up this business, uh, this organization with your husband here? Yeah? yeah. Yeah, together. Who, yes, in who, a way I invited him. I was going to say, yeah, who, <laughs> whose energy was first, because this is a really important point with founders. When people say it's 50-50, we're doing it together, that's never true. There's always one energetically who begins, has the idea or the deeper motivation. So, yeah. Tell him thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. In this marriage. <laughs> in this marriage. And... And in my business. 
and in my business. Who asked who to marry who? Did he ask you or did you ask him? Well, it's funny because he waited for my permission to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in charge here, really, aren't you? Both systems. <laughs> you the boss. Yeah. So tell him um, it's too much for me, actually. It's too much for me. It's too much for me. And I need your strength as a partner. <laughs> and I need your strength as a partner. I really do. How is that for you, Andrew, representative for husband? Um, it's releasing it, it's I feel less stressed I, mm. um, I felt a sigh a desire to sigh and a sigh mm. releasing mm. Yeah. would it be true to say I've been waiting for that is that true even though I didn't know I've been waiting When you say that, I don't know what I've been waiting for. Hmm. Um, yeah, well, I sense I've been waiting, but I don't know what for. Yes. Well, no, it's unconscious. Yeah. Permission to come alongside rather than report to. Something. I'm speaking to the representative of you. What's your husband called, Alina? Bogdan. Bogdan. It's important for you to know that it's very risky and feels unsafe when Adina asks you for help or to come alongside her. She has to develop, she's developed a survival strategy because of her childhood difficulty and her survival strategy is control and being in charge it's the most common one but really her heart yearns for partnership is that right Adina so she's going to very carefully experiment with being in partnership with you instead of being in charge of you and making you the perfect husband and perfect business partner which weakens you <laughs> How, how is that for you? Representative of Botan, yes, you. Uh, I, I, I smiled, uh, I smiled. Um, is, it, is it, I just wonder if it's, if, it's, if it's possible, and that's what just came up in me, is this a habit? Yeah, so, yeah. I wish it, I wish it were. So Adina, would it be, is what I'm saying resonating yes it is so tell your husband um please give me time please give me time to see you as my partner to see you as my partner and to walk alongside you as my partner and to walk alongside you as my partner at home at home and in the organization and in the organization let's do this together let's do this together i can't do it alone anymore i can't do it alone anymore How's I don't that? want to do it alone anymore. How's that for husband? That's wonderful. That's what I've been waiting to hear. Mm. Well, tell her I'm here for you. I'm here for you. As a man. As a man. 
as a husband. As a husband. And as a business partner. And as a business partner. See, he looks a bit more present now, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Andrew? Yeah, it's um, cooling down. It's, it's becoming more real. Yeah, great. Thank you for showing up. He's uh, clearly available for you, Adina, once you can let yourself come along, let him come alongside you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can see now, clearly. It's a deep inner movement you're making, and it'll take time, so be gentle on yourself. When you, if, if my hypothesis is right, that you you're in a survival strategy and by the way every human being has one because we're all wounded children then um, you'll be exhausted by it if you don't allow people that you trust to come alongside you and resource you like that so which one uh, is your husband on the jam board? Which, which representative is the husband? Is it, is it this one? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So do you want to um, make any movement before we bring this very short constellation to a close? Do you want to move or change the relative size of any of the representatives? in either of the two different systems? Um, the internal move that I'm connected now, it's like I want to change the direction of all my family members hmm. inside the family. And... Hmm. Right. Okay. and I'm going to do something else for you as well. Let's put that okay. in the middle. Okay, great. Ah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So just um, tell everybody, on the left is my family system and my husband and my daughter, our daughter. I, I don't see this. Okay, so on the left is my family system, my, my husband and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And on the right is my business system. Mm. Marvellous. Uh, it's uh, incredible what an impact had this line, this vertical line in my body. Yeah. I completely felt uh, I'm, I start breathing. Yes. It's like uh, my family is finally protected. I have a boundary. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. You look totally different. Yeah. So, Adina, thank you. It's a pleasure to work with you. I have one, only one other suggestion for you after we finish is change something in the constellation on the wall behind you. Mm -hmm. So you haven't got the family system mirrored in your life and work quite so clearly. Maybe you could move the mirror to the other side. Mm -hmm. I leave it with you. You, okay. you, you will think of something. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good Thank wishes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Darko. We're going to do a five minute constellation. Are yes. You still there? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm very much there. <clears throat> so, um, is there anything? that you want to look at in the five minutes, maybe 10 we've got left. Maybe the question that you said, what I represent for the founder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Ah. So choose somebody in the group um, to represent your client. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see. I think Joan, Joan, you could be uh, the founder of my client. 
Sure, with pleasure. Yes. I'm sure you knew it. <laughs> ah, yes, actually, I, I knew it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And? Should I choose Sorry. 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 I got <laughs> muted by mistake. No, no, no. Um, do you know each other? Yes. Do you work together? Sorry? No, we've been in a course together. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how did you know that you were going to get picked, John? Is it John? Yeah, Juan. Well, anyway, Juan. Well, Juan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I just felt it. I don't know. I well felt. Yes. I, I. And how do you how do you feel when you look at Darko as your consultant coach? Is that what you call yourself? Mm. Yeah. When I look at Darko as my coach, I feel a bit threatened. Mm. Mm. So Darko, say to him, um, I'm just a coach, I'm not your father. I'm just a coach, I'm not your father. Hmm. <laughs> you looks like him. Mm. Okay, yeah. The way you address to me, the, the way I feel you address to me is not about Oh, I don't know who is about, but he's on the way I perceive you arrive to me. Mm. May I say something else? Mm. I'm afraid you are, ab you are able to do it. And this scares me. Mm. I, I tell him I'll never let you succeed. If that's true. Yeah. Secretly, you don't stand a chance. Hmm. Is that true? Do you want? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what I feel in my intimacy. Hmm. Yeah. So have a look in the group and choose somebody else to represent a coach or consultant that could make a difference because Darko you don't stand a chance okay. <laughs> systemically I mean <laughs> I I'm sure you're a very good consultant but <laughs> yeah you're just in a battle with his father I do choose eh? you mean John yes you choose somebody oh. mm. it won't be a man I'm guessing pardon say it again no it's all right I was talking to myself <laughs> no but I, I, I would like to to hear again what you have, have what you have said, because I have my fixed idea already, and I would like to check if it's the same. Of course, it will be a woman. Oh, that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> that's why. I'm, that's why I thought I understood. Yeah. So choose a woman. Make sure. Yeah, I. I. I'm sure it's a woman that you clearly see, not as a mother or as a lover. But a, <laughs> a consultant, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think you've got quite a, a significant issue, Darko, here with this client. That until he's in better relationship with both his parents, he's going to mm. switch between ang fathers he's angry with and mothers he'd like to mm. go to mm. bed with. I see. I think that the one who for sure can make it is Barbara. Mm. Hmm. Who's that? Sorry? Barbara Hogenboom. Ah, Barbara. Where's Barbara? Speak to me. Ah. Here I am. Where are you? Keep, please keep talking. And this is really funny because I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so we close the triangle. <laughs> Barbara, yeah. can you keep talking? Sorry, because I can't actually... Yes, I can also raise my hand, so then I will show yeah. it for you as well. I can't... Uh, still can't see you. Okay. Oh, there you are, I see. Yeah. yeah. Does it help if I raise my as well? Yeah, no, I'll pinch you. Know. Great. Okay. <laughs> if you smile. Does it help if you smile? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't think there's anything I can add to this. It's already be all been said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Darko, maybe try saying to your client, um, 
with great respect, I'll withdraw and see what an impact that has. Mm. With great respect, I will uh, withdraw. How's that for you, Juan? Juan? It's, it makes him take it more seriously for the first time. So that's mm. the intervention. Mm. So has he had previous coaches and consultants trying to support him? Yes. Mm. So try, this is a, a nuclear option. I've only used this sentence twice in 15 years. Mm. But try saying it to him now as a representative and see what impact it has. Uh, the question is, would you like to add me to the list of consultants who have failed you? Or shall we do something useful here? Would you like to add me to the list of consultants who fail you? Or shall we do something useful here? I think my answer is yes. Yes, what? You want to add him to the list? <laughs> I'm afraid this is my real and true answer. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, so there's nothing to do. Mm. However, withdrawing from the system with respect is an intervention in itself because it may just open the door in his heart to understand what he's really, what he's caught up in here. Mm. What, do, what does Barbara think? as Barbara and as the representative for another female CEO who doesn't stand a chance. Yes, I am. Um, and this is the, so there is, um, he's looking for something that I will not give. Mm. So my answer would be, I cannot help you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So tell him I uh, won't be seduced. Exactly. I'm not available for that. And I withdraw. And I withdraw. Mm. Yeah. So he, you can see, I've, I've just got the three of you on my screen. It's like looking, yeah, it's, mm. it's with his parents. Now. And this is familiar and it's, it's something to have profound respect for. He's making unconsciously the deepest inner move that he can back home and yet he's doing it through a business and it's very very confusing and painful for everybody involved i imagine and exhausting at some level for him so yeah yeah because my my reaction is i will find someone else yeah i'll keep going around this yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is that okay, Darko, to stop there? Yes. It's not. That was really, your, really your bad. client wants to say something else to you, but he can yes. do that in the real world. Thank you for representing <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Barbara, thank, thank you, Barbara. you thank for you, John. representing another person in the line of mm. Is that okay to stop there, Darko? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bianca, am I right? I've got five minutes left. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to share the last couple of slides as a quick uh, summary. Um, but as, as I said, I mean, probably the constellations themselves are... Well, thank you so much, the three of you, for bringing such rich issues, because they're both important to you, but also very... Um, important learning points in each of those constellations. So last couple of slides just, um, I mean we're doing a two-day workshop here in an hour and a half so sorry to go at such speed. Uh, that's not entirely comfortable for me. So first of all consider who and what you represent for the founder because in that constellation you've just seen exactly the, the most common uh, confusion for founders. If you're invited in to work with a founder or a family business, consider yourself very fortunate 
indeed, because that's a huge step they've made already to ask for help, because especially founders, the most common sentence is, I'll do all this myself, I'll show you. So you probably represent a parent or a lost sibling or a lost grandfather or something. And all the more reason to stay in your systemic stance of compassionate distance without attachment. Second thing is, and we've seen this in, um, well, both um, the first two constellations, is the importance of separating out what's been wrongly joined. And that's very often the purpose. The personal purpose of the founder is usually expressed in the business, and it may be years before they realize that those both would be more achievable if they were held separately. Personal purpose and the business purpose need to be uh, separate, other, as uh, Adina has just discovered, because otherwise you'll burn out trying to achieve one through the other. Um, and the family and the business need to be seen as separate, even though they may be merged in other ways. Be very clear about the way they're merged. And lastly, the identity. The identity of the founder in particular is usually mixed up with the identity of the business. So that the business and the founder can't see the difference between each other. And that's probably the case with Darko's client. Yeah, he's nodding because of that level of confusion and transference. When you're working with founders and family businesses, always hold succession planning in your heart. And by that I mean succession planning and inheritance. They get mixed up with money. And actually, the underlying intention um, is um, for the flow of love. And it's expressed rather inelegantly and poorly through the flow of money. Look, I've given you all this money. I must love you, is the unconscious um, sentence very often in family businesses. Really, of course, people would rather feel they belong safely and are recognized because those are the ingredients for love. Love is always more valuable than money. And finally, to work with founders and family businesses in a way that's respectful and changes something so that you don't get seduced or recruited. You need to be at peace with your own founders, your own family business, as it were, your parents, your family of origin. Bert Hellinger once said, when asked the question, how do I become, what's required to become a great facilitator of family constellations? He said, it's simple, be at peace with both your parents. And I think that's really important and true when you're working with founders and family businesses and this methodology of course gives us a way of doing that. Um, this is uh, just a summary of the uh, trainings that we offer and if you're interested in reading more about I've in my book I've talked a little bit about working with founders and family businesses and uh, you're very welcome to explore that. If I knew how to come out of shared screen, what's happened to my... Oh, there it is. So, thank you. It's lovely to work with you all, and I'm sorry it's been a bit me to you rather than a discussion, but in an hour and a half, I wanted to give you as much useful content as, uh, as, I, as I could, and I hope you all... Um, Find a way of making contact with me if you'd like to know anything more or do some training, etc.